Welcome, everyone. Let's begin our lesson for today by going over the learning goals and success criteria. First, what are we learning? We're learning how to perform algebraic operations on functions to determine their function values. How are we learning it? Through the Algebra on Functions Part 1 notes and Algebra on Functions Part 1 assignment. When can we use this information? To plan for changes in your electricity bill to anticipate how your bill will change once a new rate takes effect. How do you know you learned it? By getting a score of 4 on the Algebra on Functions Part 1 assignment. Now let's take a look at our agenda for today. We will begin by going over the learning goals and success criteria. While we do that, you'll fill out your Get It Started. Once you've completed your Get It Started, we'll go over it together and answer any questions that you may have. Next, we'll do our weekly raffle. After that, we'll go over the Algebra on Functions Part 1 notes, and I'll give you time to complete the Algebra on Functions Part 1 assignment on Desmos. Once you've completed the assignment, we'll go over it together and answer any questions that you may have. At the end of class, we'll go back over our learning goals and success criteria while you fill out your Before You Go. Your only homework for tonight is to continue working on the reasoning with representations of function study guide and any incomplete assignments that you may have. Let's take a look now at the Algebra on Functions Part 1 notes. The notes begin with the learning goals and success criteria. Now, what is a function? A function is a relation in which each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. So that means that for every x, there's exactly one y that matches with that x value. If there is more than one y to match up with an x, then it is not a function. So let's look at some examples here. So we have a bunch of dots here. We have tables. We have equations. We can see it in di various different ways. But if we notice here, there's an x value here at x equals negative 4. And y is negative 3. There's no other y value that matches with it. Same thing with all of these. Here we have a straight line. I can pick any x value, and there's only one y that matches it. Here, again, same thing. Now, non-functions look something like this. So notice, if I pick an x value like x equals 0. So when x is 0, y is this one, it's this one, and it's this one. So there's three different y values that match up. That doesn't work. Same thing here. If we look here at this x value right here, there's two values there for y that make it true. So that doesn't work. Same thing here. If I pick x equals 0 here and here, there is two points. So again, not a function. Now, what is a function value? A function value is the resulting range value, so the y value, after a given domain value is selected that makes the function true. So in order to find a function value, we're going to plug in the given value for x. So whatever they tell us they want for x, the function value is the result or the output. So for instance, if I have f of 3 is equal to x minus 5. So all that means is I'm going to take 3 and plug it in, and then the result is what we call the function value. So we plug 3 in for x, and we get 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. So negative 2 is my function value. So finding a function value from a graph. So which of the following letters represents f of 4? So I'm going to go here to where x is 4, which is here. So notice I have f of 4 is represented by this dotted line p here. So it's right there. And we would say then that p represents f of 4. Now if it asks for the actual solution, then that would be c. So P is our answer in this one. Now, if it actually gives us the value, so 2, F of 2. So here we would say F of 2, which is right here, and X is actually 2. So that means that we're going to select the actual point on the graph, which in this case is D. So if you see something like this in coordinate form, you're going to find the actual point on the graph. If you see it, and it's just this part, like f of 2, it's going to be the value on the dotted line, which would have been b. Now, how do we find a function value from an actual equation? So it says, what is the function value for f of 6 for the function f of x is equal to 2x minus 5? So what we're going to do is we're going to take f of x equals 2 minus 5, and we're going to plug 6 in for x. So it goes here and here. So f of 6 is equal to 2 times 6 minus 5. Well, 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 5 is 7. So the function value for f of 6 is 7. Now, how do we perform operations on function values? 
So let's say, given the table above, what is f of 2 minus g of 1? So what that means is we're going to find what f of 2 is and then subtract g of 1 from it. So f of 2, if we look at f of 2, we can see that the value here is negative 2. So when x is 2, y is negative 2. So we keep that there. And then we look at g. So g of 1, which is here, when g is 1, the g of x is negative 1 half. So we take those two values, and then we're just going to subtract them, just like it says. So f of 2 minus g of 1 is the same thing as negative 2 minus negative 0 0.5, which is really plus positive 0.5. And we get negative 1.5 as our solution. Let's look at another example. So this one says, what is 4 times h of negative 2? So if we take h, so when h is negative 2, y is 4. So there's our value. And then we want 4 times that. So 4h of negative 2 is the same thing as 4 times 4. And 4 times 4 is 16. Now let's look at another example. So it says, what is f plus g of 2? Well, when we write that out, f plus g of 2 is the same thing as f of 2 plus g of 2. So when we do that, we find f of 2, which is negative 2, and g of 2, which is 1. And then we're just going to add those two together. So we add up negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. So when we do this, and you see f plus g or f minus g or anything like that, really what that's saying is we're going to take f of this value and then whatever operations there and then g of that number. So let's see another example of this. This time we have f g of 8. Well, f g just means multiplication. So really we can break that up and it becomes f of 8 times g of 8. So f of 8 in this case is 40. And g of 8 is right here, which is 4. So now we just multiply these together, and we get 40 times 4, which is 160. Let's talk now about how to sign in to Desmos to complete your work. So what we're going to do is you're going to click on the link to go to the assignment, and it should take you to a page that looks kind of like this. And right here where it says sign in with Google, we're going to click there. And it's going to pop up with our email accounts. You're going to click on your school email account. And it should already have you logged in because you should have already been logged in using Google Classroom. From there, I'm just going to click start the activity and it will take me into the assignment and allow me to begin. So that's how you will log in to Desmos using Google. Let's take a look now at the Algebra on Functions Part 1 assignment. The assignment begins with the learning goals and success criteria. If we scroll down, there's a link here to take us to the Desmos activity. Go ahead and click on that link, and it should take you to a page that looks like this. We'll go ahead and click Start the Activity. The activity begins with the learning goals and success criteria. We'll go ahead and click Next. Now this one gives us a table, and it has an f of x and a g of x. And it wants to know what is f plus g of 2. So we should notice that f plus g is the same thing as f of 2 plus g of 2. And if we look at f of 2, so when x is 2, f of x is negative 2. So we're going to go ahead and plug that in. So that's negative 2. And then when g of 2, so when x is 2, g of x is 1. So this is negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. So that would be our answer. Then let's look at this one. So we have g times f of 0, which is the same thing as g of 0 times f of 0. So if we look when x is 0, g of x is 1. So we plug that in here. Then f of 0. So when x is 0, f of x is 0. So 1 times 0 is 0. So that is our answer. So you'll do that for each of these. And then we'll click Next. Then we're going to do some different operations. So it's f squared of 4. So that's really just f of 4 times f of 4. And we'll solve that.
Then we have G minus F over F. So we'll take that and we'll say G of 5 minus F of 5. And we're going to take that whole thing and divide it by F of 5 and solve. So G of 5 is 2.5. So go ahead and put that in, 2.5. And f of 5 is 10. So that goes in here, and we have it down here as well, so over 10. So then we have 2.5 minus 10, which is negative 7.5 divided by 10. And we can just leave it like that, or we can say negative 0.5. 75. So that's negative 0 0.75 would be our answer. So you'll do that for each of these as well. Then we'll click next. So now we're going to compare what happens if we flip flop our F and G. So which ones goes first? So here we should have some value, right? You'd solve this one and solve this one and then make a conjecture. So when we subtract two functions from each other, what conjecture can we make? So what statement can we make about if we flip-flop the F and the G. Same thing with division here. Then you're going to compare these ones as well and answer these questions. Now, once you're done with that, you'll go ahead and go back to your Google Form and click Next. This will take you to your Before You Go. Go ahead and fill out your Before You Go and then submit your work on Google Classroom.